Hello everybody, my name is Kiyomi Pyeongpyeong, but you can call me Kiki. Uh, so today, I wanted to like make a video on one of the most famous microscopic creatures in the world, the beloved tardigrades. I'm very interested in not only learning about microscopic organisms, but more about fascinating plants. I'm even considering studying more into mycology, uh, which, if you didn't know, was the study of mushrooms. A goal of mine recently has been to broaden my knowledge of biology, and I believe that starts with the little guys that we don't really acknowledge as much, or you know, we can't even see. I find it so cool how teeny tiny little microscopic creatures have such an impact on the world. You know, they have their own special roles in our ecosystem too, which is really, really cool. You even have, um, <laughs> I'm sorry this is kind of gross, but you even have tiny creatures living on you right now. I, I guess I know it sounds weird, but it kind of gives me comfort. It's like I have lots of little friends all the time that, <laughs> that keep me safe. And as some of them help protect you too, that's also a really good bonus. Uh, now, I would, <laughs> I'd like you to please look away if you're sensitive to gross things or like skip ahead in the video. Um, but let me just talk about the little creatures that live on us. For example, there are little mites that can live in your eyelashes and eyebrows. The names of the most common culprits are called, I might butcher this, Demodex filicurums and Demodex brevis. They are carried on from person to person through skin contact. So I guess if you're as touch deprived as me, you don't really have to worry about that. Or oh, getting these little guys on you. Um, they survive essentially though, um, well they survive on your hair follicles, um, hence the name, like I guess because there's follicle in the name folliculum, um, which is where they lay their little eggies. Um, but what they survive on is essentially your facial sweat, um, the sebum and mucus that is secreted by your glands, um, they just eat that all up. I guess they're kind of cute. Um, I'll show you a picture of one. Uh, under a microscope though, they kind of look like, okay, they kind of look like if you combined it a prawn head with a carrot body. Mmm, forbidden carrots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, so um, on we're talking about the topic of the video, which is tardigrades. Um, so tardigrades are itty bitty. Uh, they're a phylum of eight-legged segmented micro-animals with a variety of sizes. Averaging from under 500 microns, their sizes range from a tiny 50 microns to about 1200 microns. And they're so cute too. Look at this little guy, he go brrrr. <laughs> Even though they are considered to be aquatic micro critters, they actually don't even swim. They do this little awkward walk thingy. Um, look at this guy go. One trait all tardigrades share is their eight stubby legs. Tardigrades have three legs on each side of their body and two on their back. The legs often have long, like bear-like claws on them. They use these claws to hook onto objects, like plants or sand, that they clumsily travel along. They are all filled with hemolymph, which is comparable to blood. Uh, it's filled with nutrients and works kind of like an endoskeleton, wrapped up in a special skin called a cuticle. The cuticle's coloration is produced by the pigmentation of the cuticle itself, but also is affected by the content of their digestive tract. Um, as the tardigrade grows, though, similarly to reptiles, they must shed their skin as this cuticle, you know, it stays the same size. Some species of tardigrades even lay their eggs into this cuticle, which then expands to hold them in. Um, and when the cuticle sheds their eggs, um, so when the cuticle is shed out of their body, the eggs stay inside it like a sack, um, which then gives them extra protection from predators. They also have long hairs that are found along their bodies that work similarly to a bunny's whiskers. Um, <laughs> this helps them feel around and sense their environment as their eyes are relatively simple. Besides making them look super cute, they are not, I guess they're not really eyes, but instead each eye is a single photoreceptive cell. These are used to only detect the light and the dark. Um, for being such little guys, tardigrades are very complex, having over 40,000 cells. They ha have digestive systems and salivary glands, muscles for moving and even brains for thinking. Although they don't have lungs, they soap up their oxygen from their water. Tardigrades are referred to as moss piglets or sea bears, which correlates to the environment that they dwell in. Although they occupy most every, most like 
every place you can think of on the earth, from snowy places like Antarctica, soil, beach, sand, rivers, lakes, streams, um, on mosses, on algae, on any plant you can imagine, also on volcanoes, essentially anywhere in the earth's biosphere. They're mainly found in like four aquatic environments though. This consists of the marine or brackish water. Um, others can be found in fresh water like ponds, lakes and rivers. Differently from these pure water environments, the other two main environments that tardigrades live in are films of water, which can be almost everywhere like I said before. For example, if you look at strands of grass, you may see tiny little raindrop looking films on them. You know, most of the time, though, these aren't visible to the human eye. But the thing that totally blows my mind is that these tiny films of water can be some tardigrades' entire world. Isn't that so cool? Something that you can't even see can be an entire world for these little guys. That's what the coolest thing about microscopic organisms are. Um, but they mainly survive in these interesting environments like this. For example, in freshwater, they live among all kinds of vegetation and feed on the cell contents of plants and algae. And the way that they do this, essentially, is that they have these two little stitlets on their mouth parts. Um, and using this, they penetrate the plant cell and the cell membranes, sucking, um, sucking all of the internal nutrients out of that plant. Others who aren't as fortunate though actually eat unicellular organisms or other micro-animals. Some even resort to cannibalism and eat other tardigrades. But remember, as temperature changes, the water goes through cycles and these films of water can easily dry up. Due to this, tardigrades can easily adapt and survive in almost impossible situations. I mean, they are most well known for their environmental extremes that they can survive with. Um, such as temperatures as low as 272 degrees Celsius and as high as 150 degrees Celsius. They can survive through extreme radiation, pressure as high as 6,000 atmospheres. I even read somewhere that NASA brought tardigrades to space with them, and when they were brought back, they were completely alive. After, they exposed them to the sun and the vacuum of space. So, how do they survive these extreme like, environments? Well, they do this going through a process referred to cryptobiosis. In cryptobiosis, the metabolism of these tardigrades can drop like less to normal. And when these conditions become bearable for these poor little guys again, the tardigrade will come back to life. There are actually a few kinds of cryptobiosis that these tardigrades experience, such as anhydrobiosis, meaning that they are dealing with a lack of water, hence the word hydro. When anhydrobiosis occur, the, um, the tardigrade will avoid being dried up, um, so it rolls into a ball, and these balls are called a ton. Then a protective sugar is synthesized and replaces the water in the cells of the tardigrades. Anoxybiosis occurs when there is an insufficient oxygen. Um, you know, for survival of the tardigrade. To deal with this, the tardigrade's body will swell up and become rigid. Once oxygen concentration is restored, the tardigrade will revive. There's cyrobiosis, which allows the tardigrade to cope with changes in osmotic pressure as well. But besides the fact that they can withstand all these extreme environmental changes um, by the um, cryptobiosis, they actually get really uncomfy and get sad when they're in these environments. They don't enjoy it. Um, but also different to popular belief, tardigrades are actually very fragile creatures and are not immortal. They usually die due to being eaten by, you know, either their own or other larger microorganisms. But now onto my favourite part, how exactly do tardigrades reproduce? So, many tardigrades are parthenogenic or self-fertilising hermaphrodites. While other species do the deed, in species that reproduce sexually, each sex has a single gonad which is a reproductive gland located above the gut. Nails have two sperm ducts connecting to a single gonopore, opening in front of the anus or into their hind gut. Females have a single oviduct opening in a single gonopore as well, located in the hind gut or dorsally in the anus, as well as two seminal receptacles. Fertilization might be direct with the male depositing sperm into the female seminal receptacle or body cavity or indirect. Indirect fertilization occurs when the male deposits sperm under the female's cuticle. Um, as I stated before, with the female molts, 
um, the fertilized eggs will be put in the cuticle with the sperm. To turn the female tardigrade on, the man will stroke a female with his legs, stimulating her to lay eggs on a grain of sand. Then he spreads his sperm all over the eggs and into the cuticle, um, making more little tardigrade babies. Then the cycle of tardigrade life continues. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed me speaking about tardies today. <laughs> I apologize if I get anything wrong, as of course microbiology isn't my specialty, and I'm still learning the ropes of it. Thank you as always for your continued support for me. Thank you very much, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm very sleep deprived right now. Um, so I might sound a bit slurry in my words. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. But if you guys have checked my Twitter, you'll see that I'll be debuting soon. This is, um, this is my first video since I um, said that I'd be debuting. I've been quite busy with that, but I'm hoping to get a really nice video out next week. So yeah, thank you everyone. Bye-bye.